You know, about seven years ago, before I actually became a teacher here, um, I was in construction, we had a family business, and of course the recession came, and um, I was at higher highs, and then, you know, with the recession, lost a lot of personal things, lost my father, lost a family business, and um, just kind of hit a real dark spot there, and and uh, try to battle through it, but um, really until I relied on my faith, I could never find why. You know, because there's always that, when, when things like that happen, you're always asking that why, but until you believe or you have your faith, you don't really understand why, but I, now I know why, because it led me to where I'm at right now. Um, this is something that I always wanted to do, um, but I figured out that, you know, that's why I went through that. And, you know, we always, my wife and I always say, God will never give us more than we can handle. I said, well, sometimes he gives me too much credit, you know. Uh, but we got through it, and um, that's what got me started on my journey about going back and getting the education to become a teacher because, um, you know, I just wanted to be involved more than what I was as a coach. I had been coaching my whole life here in the Low Country. I've coached at Bluffton High, I've coached here, I've coached at McCracken Middle School, youth sports forever. Um, like most kids in high school, I was a FCA vice president, you know, I was a football player. Our, our coach was, uh, Coach Dave Adams was the coach, uh, headed up the FCA at Hillman High. And, um, and it was, you know, I was a Christian when it was convenient. It was depending on who you're around, and that happens a lot, especially for kids, but even as, uh, as adults, it happens more so than not. Um, as far as being more consistent, I went to a, Coach Schubert carried me to an FCA meeting up at Charleston Southern, and Coach Hodges from Chapin High School was there, and, and um, they just come off of a 3A public school state championship, and, and my biggest thing was like, I've, I, had, I knew my passion was my penalty. I couldn't control it, you know? Um, and I didn't know how to do both. So I go and I listen to this guy and he's up there speaking about football and his Christianity and he's gritting his teeth. I mean, he's sweating. I'm like, okay, okay. He gets it. He does both. He can do both. He can be a Christian all the time and still be a great football coach because he applies in both. We looked at coaching at a different angle. It was not about the X's and O's anymore. It was about building a character, building a, a culture here. Isaiah 40, 30, 31 is, is the verse that I always go to. Uh, there's a lot of meeting reasons that I do go to it. Um, first one, most importantly, uh, we have it in the weight room. I have it on my arm. And of course, you know how it reads is the youth will go tired and weary and young men will stumble and fall, but those who believe in God will renew their strength. Um, and then 31 goes on to say they soar on wings like eagles and, and things like that. But for me, it's more 30. Um, and that was the first scripture I ever shared in this weight room, and that's the scripture I shared before the state championship, and when you listen to it, and that's the whole thing, I try to get the kids to understand the scripture and to apply it to everyday life, because sometimes it can be confusing, but if you listen to it, you're 12 games in, you've got injuries like you've never had before, you're wore out, but you will not go tired and weary, you trust in your God, and you renew your strength. And I've seen kids get lost in the classroom and stuff like that, so I want to use the platform that you know, God has given me to become a coach and a teacher. We learn to love one another. We don't leave the weight room until we hug each other every day. Um, we started a we over me talk, you know, but until you can do that, you can't trust that guy sitting next to you. Until you can trust that guy sitting next to you, you can't play for each other. Now I'm here eight hours a day. I'm here another three, four hours in the afternoons. So now I, I'm more hands-on and it's just, it's real fulfilling for me. Um, and I hope it's as much fulfilling for the kids. Uh, to be around and, and make a uh, impact on their lives.